Hi, welcome back to my garden. Today I wanted to tell you a little bit about wasps. Um, now, when I say wasps, you probably immediately think of the, the yellow and black social wasps that live in nests that sometimes bother us at picnic time. Actually, there are thousands of species of wasp, many of them, most of them, solitary creatures. Many of them are actually parasitoids that lay their eggs in um, other insects and eat them from the inside out in a slightly gruesome way. Um, but today I am going to focus on those social wasps, the, 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 the kind of familiar wasps. Um, they're often reg regarded as pests. Um, they, of course they can sting, uh, in defence of their nest particularly, and they can be a bit bothersome sometimes around picnics, but actually they're beneficial insects. They do a really useful job for most of the year. They're primarily carnivores. They feed on aphids and other smaller insects, often uh, crop pests. So they're quite important biological control agents, and they're also um, often underestimated for their importance as pollinators. Wasps are good pollinators of, of a whole range of flowers. So uh, we should be nice to wasps, they're important. Um, and so uh, the, the yellow and black wasps, the, the, the social wasps, live in a nest, a colony that they build very similar in many ways to uh, a bee colony. It's founded by a, a queen wasp in the spring and it grows and she rears daughter workers that help her look after the nest and help it to grow and grow until late summer when it um, produces new queens and males and the old nest usually dies off. Um, one key difference between bees and wasps is that um, wasp nests, so, so bee nests are made from wax. The bees secrete um, uh, wax on their tummies and they scrape it off with their legs and they use it to, to build, to, to make all sorts of kind of, you know, the cells of the nest and everything else. Really cool. Wasps use something completely different. They use paper mache. Um, so I've been watching over the last few weeks there have been wasps chewing away uh, the wooden cladding on our house and on the garden furniture, taking off tiny, they, they, they bite it and uh, they, they, uh, they make uh, paper mache by mixing it with saliva and then they regurgitate that and use it to build their nests. Um, and behind me is an old shed that I built a few years ago, um, which has also been chewed up by wasps for a long time, but they've also this year they nested inside it in the apex. Now it's the 1st of September, normally a wasp nest would still be going at this time of year, but this one has, has expired, I don't know why. I can't see any workers left in there, I'm not 100% sure there aren't some. Um, but I thought it'd be a great opportunity to have a, a look at a wasp nest up close, to dig it apart, take it apart, have a look at, at its structure, because they're really amazing things. So, come with me into the shed. Here's a wasp chewing away on our garden furniture, scraping off the, the wood with its mandibles to make paper mache. It's flown off. So, this is the inside of my garden shed. Very exciting, full of the usual junk, lots of winemaking equipment and cider barrels and everything else. But for most of the spring and summer, we were walking backwards and forwards underneath this creature, this beast, this steadily growing wasp nest. Slightly unnerving when there were wasps streaming in and out of the, the entrance hole on the bottom there. It's going to climb up this ladder and we can have a close look. So it's the size of about a small football, I guess. Uh, this grey structure, and you can see the streaks where it's been carefully constructed a little layer at a time. Really extraordinary structure hanging from the ceiling. So now I'm going to get a knife and try and chop it down and just pray there aren't there still any wasps inside it because that would make life really exciting. So here we go. Keep an ear out for any uh, buzzing noises. You don't want to damage it too much in getting it down. 
If you can see, you're probably just looking at the back of my head at the moment. Apologies if you can't see what's happening. Hopefully it's coming loose. Be firmly attached. Wow. Okay. So there we have it. I'm going to take this outside where the light's a bit better and uh, we can have a good look at it. But you can see it's quite a beast. Layers and layers. A lot of that must act as insulation to keep them warm so they can uh, help keep their brood warm in the middle. Thankfully, no. Uh, adult wasps to defend it. Okay, let's uh, take this outside. So, this was the old entrance hole which is on the bottom and this was where it was attached to the to the shed and this, the reason I was having real difficulty getting it off the shed uh, off the wood was this stuff so I was a bit confused as to why it was so tough because paper mache is not the strongest of materials but actually this is silk this this is really tough stuff and these are wax moth larvae so I don't know how well you can see these things but uh, see there this yellow beast crawling around that's uh, a wax moth now I'm pretty sure this is a Fomia sociella, which is a species normally associated with bumblebee nests. It, um, it's a, one of the worst um, enemies of natural bumblebee nests. Uh, we found the majority of nests get infested with these mo moth larvae, caterpillars, and uh, the, the female lays a, a batches of eggs in bumblebee nests and the, the larvae uh, just consume the bumblebee nest. Um, they eat the food stores, they eat the wax, they eat the baby bees, they eat everything. And they protect themselves by spinning a really tough network of silk tubes that they hide in. Um, and the bees are not able to do nothing about it. Now, I had heard that um, wax moths um, uh, will infest bumblebee nests, but, uh, oh, sorry, wasp nests. But I've never seen it before. Here you go. There, there, there one is. Little blighter crawling around. Um, bright yellow. Um, so the majority of, of uh, infested bumblebee nests are completely destroyed. They collapse. And it seems that that might be why this wasp nest has died off. Um, but let's, let's have a look at more detail. So let me just get the camera focused. I think maybe I'll try to very gently saw the whole thing in half. Seems kind of criminal, but the wasps are done with it. They don't come back to these nests. They're abandoned after they've been used each year. All that effort. All my garden furniture went into this. That's like slicing a cake. Wow. Look at that. That's extraordinary. I'll turn it round. So that's, it would have been this way up in real life. So these, let me just, so the outer stuff that I'm peeling off, this is just protection and insulation. It's really lightweight, weighs almost nothing. It's, um, it's just layers and layers of, of it's almost well paper essentially and then the offspring of the wasp are reared in these hexagonal cells so um, they've 
Um, it's a, a really interesting example of convergent evolution where two different insect species, the honeybees and social wasps, which are, uh, their ancestors were solitary insects, didn't make combs at all, so they've uh, both independently arrived at the hexagonal cell design as the most efficient way of making a, uh, a, 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 a structure for rearing your offspring. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there are still some uh, little dead offspring in some of these cells as if they were abandoned. So they lay an egg in, in, in each cell and then they feed them with um, uh, the insect prey that the adults bring back. So if we just strip this off, we'll just see what else. If there's anything much else to see. So these are the youngest, most recent layers, and then back up towards the top of the nest, which was originally constructed by the queen. And you can see the top of the nest has been badly affected by the, the wax moths, all this um, silk uh, shows where they've been. Little blighters. Now whether it was the wax moths that demolished the nest and caused it to die off, or whether it was disease or pesticides or something else, we'll, we'll never know. Ah, oh, there we go, there's interesting. One dead wasp, not the queen. But uh, that's the only, oh no, there's another one. There's a few, few corpses left behind, but it's like the Marie Celeste, we'll never know. Where did all the wasps go? Why did they abandon? I have no idea. Fascinating. <laughs> so, there you have it. Wasp nest. Um, just remember, wasps are beneficial creatures. We should look after them and not get too angry with them when they try and steal a bit of our picnic. Thanks for listening. Back next time.